The anecdote fallacy is when we rely on personal experience or isolated examples instead of scientific evidence or sound arguments. Anecdotes can be powerful. We've seen them used in climate change to cast doubt on global warming. We keep hearing that 2014 has been the warmest year on record. I asked the chair, you know what this is? It's a snowball, and that's just from outside here. So it's very, very cold out. Arguing that global warming doesn't exist because of a cold day makes as much sense as eating a large meal than arguing, I feel full, global hunger doesn't exist. It's not logical, but personal experience is persuasive. We've seen anecdotal arguments when it comes to the drug hydroxychloroquine, which is used for treating malaria, but recently promoted as a treatment for COVID-19. I happen to be taking it. I happen to be taking it. Hydroxychloroquine? I'm taking it, hydroxychloroquine. Right now, yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I started taking it. Because I think it's good. I've heard a lot of good stories. The key phrase here is good stories. People think in stories, and we remember information in the form of stories. So we instinctively respond to compelling narratives. There's nothing in the world more powerful than a good story. Nothing can stop it. A story about someone being dangerously sick, taking a drug, and then dramatically recovering is gripping, emotional, and consequently highly persuasive. I couldn't hardly breathe and I was trying not to panic. I was trying not to, to make the situation worse, but I felt like I really didn't have a whole lot of time. I felt like I really only had hours. It's, give me the breakdown of the time frame. So the point of when you receive the prescription to the point of when you start feeling better and all that. Less than two hours. The problem is we trust our personal experiences, but we're easily fooled. If I take a drug and feel better, how do I know it was the drug and not a placebo effect? Or maybe I was already getting better. The point is, I don't know. That's why we need scientific studies. Rather than rely on isolated examples, scientists select large samples that represent the population. By analyzing how a large group responds to a drug, ideally in comparison to another group who doesn't receive the drug, scientists are able to make reliable conclusions about whether the drug is effective. A number of scientific studies have investigated the effectiveness of hydroxychloroquine as a treatment for COVID-19. A Chinese study found no evidence that the drug was effective as a treatment. However, they did find more adverse effects among those given hydroxychloroquine compared to people who didn't receive the drug. A French study found no evidence that hydroxychloroquine helped COVID-19 patients, but a number of people experienced heart rhythm problems and they had to discontinue taking the drug. A Brazilian study found that taking chloroquine at high doses was so dangerous they shut down the study after just six days. While more clinical studies are ongoing, the research so far shows very little evidence that hydroxychloroquine is an effective treatment for COVID-19. The evidence is stronger that the drug is potentially harmful. These dangerous side effects are why the FDA cautions against using hydroxychloroquine outside of a hospital setting or clinical trial. The American College of Physicians have also published a recommendation against using hydroxychloroquine except in a clinical trial. Even the director of the World Health Organization, Michael Ryan, warned of the potential side effects of using hydroxychloroquine. At this stage, uh, hydroxychloroquine, norochloroquine have been as yet found to be effective in the treatment uh, of COVID-19 or in the prophylaxis against uh, uh, coming down with the disease. Um, in fact, the opposite uh, in, in that uh, warnings have been issued by many authorities regarding the potential side effects of the drug. So there is now enough scientific data to answer the question. What the hell do you have to lose? What you could lose is your life. Relying on good stories about hydroxychloroquine is a vivid example of the danger of anecdotal thinking. If you hear a good story, remember how anecdotal thinking can lead you astray. Anecdotes are powerful, but they are no substitute for scientific research in helping us make wise, safe decisions.